What's up guys, it's Frankie here. The Derek Jeter documentary is finally here. The Captain Episode 1 premiered tonight. This is the first part of a seven-part documentary on the Captain's life and career. Tonight, episode focused on Jeter's early life, him being born, how his parents met, going through him playing high school baseball and basketball, as we learned, getting drafted by the Yankees, and eventually being called up by the Yankees, and it ends right after the 1995 season, which was his first season, but he didn't get to play in that ALDS as the Yankees lose to the Mariners in that heartbreaking division series. While, like every Yankee fan, I was beyond excited for this documentary and I couldn't wait to watch this, I did have questions about, does this need to be seven parts? You know, I love Jeter and I'm glad he's getting all this attention, but did we really need a seven part documentary to talk about Derek Jeter? And honestly, while I was watching this documentary, I had some questions while I was watching episode one. I was like, gosh, do we really need to know about all of this, about everything that happened in Jeter's you know, life growing up? But then as I got to the end of the episode, I felt like it was a good decision. They really went deep into, again, talking about Jeter's parents and you know how they met, and then of course, him growing up in Kalamazoo, Michigan. There were some cool parts in there. The best part of that whole episode to me was the focus on when Jeter got drafted and they had home video of Jeter getting the call from the Yankees. That I think is so awesome. We are so used to that, seeing draft day videos of guys getting the call from whatever, whether it's football or basketball. So to see that from 1992, to see home video from 1992 of Jeter getting drafted was really, really cool. And there was a lot of other cool videos like Jeter at two years old, and a lot of Jeter stuff that I had never seen before. But that was the one that really stood out to me. Part one also did a very good job, I thought, of painting a backdrop of what the Yankees were up to when they drafted Jeter. And that made me realize that this whole Jeter documentary, well, yes, it's mostly a Jeter documentary, is also the focus of the 1990s Yankees. Much like how The Last Dance was secretly a documentary on the 90s Bulls about that whole team in that era, this Jeter documentary is also a secret 90s Yankees documentary about you know those four championships in five years, one of the last great dynasties in all of sports. At least the last great dynasty, I feel like, in baseball. I know that Giants fans may disagree, but I feel like the last, you know, the last team to go three in a row in baseball to win three championships in around four and five years. So they showed what was going on with the Yankees at the time. They showed the Dave Winfield, George Steinbrenner feud and the Yankees kind of flailing from 1982 all the way to 93 when, and then they had a good season 94 before the strike was shortened. They also showed that George Steinbrenner was not as great of an owner as Yankee fans sometimes like to make it out to be. He had some good qualities and he had some really bad qualities and this documentary showed both of those I felt like. It gave a lot of respect to Gene Michael who took over after Steinbrenner was forced out of baseball. It showed the great video of Steinbrenner when it was announced that Steinbrenner was uh, out of baseball, Yankee fans cheering. And Yankee fans went from cheering George Steinbrenner's removal from baseball to crying after his death. It is a little weird. Another thing I appreciated about the documentary was showing Jeter's struggles, at least when he first got to the minor leagues. I think it said that he had 56 errors in his first season in the minors. So if people think that Jeter was a terrible defender when he got to the majors, somehow he was even worse in the minor leagues. So I was interested to see the Jeter talking about openly about how there were times that he thought about, have I made a terrible mistake going to the Yankees? And, you know, I want to come back home. He talked about calling his parents, like, can I come back to Michigan? Seeing a more human side of Jeter there, we know Jeter is this immortal five-time champion, never did anything wrong, but it was interesting to see him fail, uh, fail here in the minors, and that was, I thought, a great part of it. I was also really interested in hearing Jeter talk about the racism that he dealt with and the racism his family dealt with, you know, growing up, and you know, his mom and dad, you know, it's a biracial couple, and the, the problems they had to go through. Again, made it a more human story, and I'm, that is the one thing that I've seen from all the reviews so far, people who watch more episodes, is that we get to see a more human side of Jeter, and I really appreciate that here because Jeter would never, you know, open the door uh, to his personal life like that or to his, you know, his family life like that. So to see that in documentary form, I'm glad we finally got it. It took way too many years for it to happen, but I'm glad we got to see it there. Another thing I loved, great soundtrack so far. We had Pete Rock and CJ Smoove. We had Nas, The World Is Yours. They used CM Punk's theme song, The Cult of Personality. Randy Wilkins did a real solid job of picking the right music here for this documentary, first at least first episode. And again, if the first episode is any indication, we're in for a lot of good needle drops throughout the rest of this series. The other thing that I noticed throughout this was that some people might be interested in you know his early life, but I think most people, there's two things they want to know from this. When this documentary was first announced, they wanted to know two things, his relationship with A-Rod and his relationship with women. Those are the only two things that I feel like people 
outside of Yankee fans, because yeah, Yankee fans are going to care about all this stuff. But I feel like if you're not a Yankee fan, if you're interested in anything, it would be those two things. And we didn't get that here. So if you were watching part one, like, oh, I can't wait to see any of that. No, you're not getting it. From what I've heard, the A-Rod stuff doesn't come until like part three. And then I don't know how much of the stuff they deal with in terms of women. But I, I'm, I'm kind of interested in hearing his thoughts, mostly on the A-Rod stuff. But you know, the women stuff, would not mind hearing some of his thoughts and whether or not those gift baskets were true. So overall, I really enjoyed it. It took me a while again, midway through to get into it, but then I realized what they were doing. I realized where the whole thing was going and I enjoyed it a lot more. You know, again, I was going to love this anyway. You know, it's a seven part documentary on Derek Jeter. Of course, I was going to love this. Uh, I don't know if it's ever going to reach like last dance territory, but it was an overall fun hour. It was a great nostalgic look back at the Yankees, at least, you know, that if, if that's what episode one did for me, I can't imagine what the other six are going to do. Like I'm, I'm going to be crying for so much, I mean, the documentary opened by showing Jeter's final uh, game at Yankee Stadium. I mean, which still gets me emotional every time I see it. So I feel like we're in for a lot more of those moments here, but overall, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and I was glad to, see, glad to see it turned out as well as it did. And I'm glad, for, again, from all the reviews, I'm glad Jeter seemed like he really opened up to them because this would have been a very boring documentary if Jeter just was typical Jeter and that he didn't talk anything about A-Rod or anything like that. So I'm glad that he opened up here at least we didn't see, we opened up a little bit here in episode one, but I can't wait to see when we talked about A-Rod and stuff like that. I can't wait to see him open up way more. That's what I thought of it. What'd you guys think? Tell me what you thought in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. If you're new to this channel, you just see me a huge subscribe down below. I'll be back Thursday, I believe, for episode two. I'll have a reaction to that. Hope to see you guys then. Take care and God bless.